Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. I'm your host, Ron McKeefrey, and today on the episode, I have Mike Robertson with us. Recently saw Mike speak at an IYCA conference where he did a fantastic job of presenting on his 7R philosophy. And so I wanted to have him on the show to make sure uh, to, to spread that with everybody, to share that with everybody. And so um, did a great job there. I know he did a great job today as well with this episode. Uh, he's a co-owner of a, a performance facility in Indiana. He's got a great presence online with robertsontrainingsystems.com. You probably either heard him speak or, or watched one of his videos or read one of his articles. Um, and, and more importantly, he's a, he's a great guy, uh, giving a lot of information back to the community right now. So uh, sit back and enjoy this episode. But before you do, I want to make sure uh, that we represent the Play Sports Performance Forum as well, sole sponsor of the show. Uh, if you have not gone to their Facebook page, if, if it, for anything else, uh, there's some fantastic pictures of uh, facilities. And uh, so you just get to see some great facilities and get some ideas that way. But if you're in the market for flooring, uh, you can't go wrong by them. Also want to make sure you guys check out Strength on Demand, a project that I, uh, myself, Rob Taylor, worked on. It's basically 52 strength and conditioning clinic presentations that you can access from any device. Um, and uh, we're real proud of that product. So check that out as well. But sit back and enjoy this episode. We're going to take a lot out of it. All right, guys, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. I'm here with Mike Robertson. Uh, if you guys have had any opportunities to, to see Mike's work, you know that he's, a, he's one of those guys that always has great content, great information. Had a chance to see him speak recently, and I was talking with Joe Ken, actually, and, and he's using your, your seven R's and adding yep. an eighth in, in his yep. mind. Um, but, uh, but wanted to reach out to you and have you on for the show, so I appreciate you coming on, man. Man, I appreciate it, Coach. It's always good to do stuff like this, and uh, hopefully people enjoy what we have to talk about today. No doubt, man. Well, hey, let's talk a little bit about how you got into this thing in the, whole, in the first place. You know, what, what led sure. to um, your current situation, and, and what were some of the, the mentors that you had along the way? Absolutely. Well, I got into all this because, you know, I was an athlete growing up, uh, probably not the most physically gifted athlete out there, but... Our junior year of high school, we got a weight room, started pounding the iron a little bit, and we weren't a big school, so uh, you know we had a small weight room. But I saw an immediate improvement in virtually every sport I played. You know, right. so you know baseball, basketball, and I was like, man, this is my thing. Like I really enjoy this. And so as I got into college, I knew this was probably something I wanted to pursue. Went into exercise, spent four years in that program, but it really solidified it for me when I did an internship at the Ball State Athletic Weight Room. You know, I got to spend all summer working around with people, you know, that love love getting better at sports, love getting stronger, more powerful, more athletic, and I knew right then that this was going to be the thing for me. So I'll kind of give you the, the warp speed tour, but, yeah. you know, I did a little bit of everything. I've done some rehab. I've done some one-on-one. -on -one, I've done, you know, big group stuff, being at a – Division One school of all state, but for the last five years, uh, Bill Hartman and myself have owned a gym called Indianapolis Fitness and Sports Training, and we work with everything from little kids that want to get better at sports up to elite and professional athletes to you know your average person that just wants to move better, feel better, maybe take off a couple pounds. So sure. um, you know we're kind of all over the board. It's a pretty broad spectrum gym, but the thing that I've always been the most passionate about is working with athletes and helping them take their performance to the next level. You know, with working with some of those pro athletes, uh, we were talking off camera a little bit about some of the athletes that you're working with. What what yeah. was the motivation of staying, you know, in the private setting or the performance setting versus maybe trying to pursue college or professional as, as a team setting? Yeah, and, and the thing about that is there's pros and cons to both, right? Yeah. And you've probably seen both sides of it. Um, in the private sector, the, the thing that I like is I get to call the shots, yeah. you know, now – the bad side is, you know, you only have one athlete, and you know that one athlete's probably going to be in pretty darn good shape, but you don't have any control over what the rest of the team is doing. So that's kind of the drawback there. Versus in the more public setting, you know, at least when I was at Ball State, and I'm not throwing them under the bus, I'm sure every school is like this, but, you know, you have coaches that want to tell you as a strength coach how to do your job, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they they read an article that the best school in the country in whatever sport does p90x right. and so they want you to do p90x with your athletes and, and i'm just throwing those examples out there sure. but but that's kind of how it is and and that's a frustrating position to be in because i would like to think you know i've spent the time 
and effort to be really good at my job, and I want to give your athletes the best results. So you're a great skill coach and a great sport tactical coach. I have no doubt about that. So if you would leave me to be, do my part to the best of my ability, I think we could merge the best of both worlds. Right. So that was always the frustrating thing for me. It was just you know trying to make sure not only the athletes but the coaches are on board with what you're doing. No doubt, no doubt. You know, I, I went and heard you speak at the IYCA uh, conference, and, and your topic was the seven R's. Yep. Uh, um, let's go into a little bit of that. And, and what I like about uh, you know, let me start off by saying what I like about it, and, and so much sure. of strength and conditioning is, is packaging your material. I mean, none of it is, is, is earth-shattering, but it's, right. a, it's a great system to package your material, to present it to your athletes, to present it to your coaches that you work with. Yep. And, and and get them to buy in. And, and and you know as well as we've talked about this, it's ninety percent of the battle is getting your athletes and your coaches to buy in hundred percent to what you're selling. So if you can kind of just give a brief overview of the seven R's and, and how you kind of maybe even package that material sure. in the first place. Well, the reason that we packaged this was, you know, if you would have looked at one of our old workouts, um, you know, the way we broke down the workout it was very principle based, but to, to like the lay person that walks in here, it was very hard to describe all the unique aspects of what we do, right? right? Because they may see like soft tissue mobilization or foam rolling or whatever the case may be. And, and a, to a lay person, they have no idea what that is. So the whole purpose behind the R7 approach was to, number one, give some sort of almost like an emotional response to the different words, right? So mm -hmm. when somebody hears R1, which is release, well, that makes sense, you know, to right. a client. Even if they've never worked out before, they can explain to their friend, hey, release. Oh, yeah, I jump on this foam roller and I roll on the outside of my leg and it hurts like hell. But when I stand <laughs> up, you know, I'm more flexible and my knee doesn't hurt. Yeah. So that's what we tried to do along the way is just make this into a package that our clients could understand and our athletes. So we took that that concept basically and we applied it to all the things that we do. So we've got R1, which is release or foam rolling. R2, which is a reset, and all a reset is is sometimes it could be something like a hip flexor stretch or some sort of non-manual technique to try and restore a position of a joint, right? Mm -hmm. We know a lot of our athletes run around an anterior tilt, so we'll try and get them back to a more neutral pelvis by resetting them right. before we get into their workout. So that's R2. R3 is readiness. That's what we all do, you know, just your general dynamic warm-up. It could be stretches. It could be, uh, you know, form running drills, low-level plyos and agilities, but just something to kind of build them up to the workout. Right. R4 is what we call reactive. And that's going to be more of like your speed strength stuff. If you're throwing med balls, if you're doing jumps, um, again, you could do like your low-level plyos and agility stuff there. Anything that's explosive mm -hmm. uh, would be R4. R5 is what we're all pretty passionate about, resistance training. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one's pretty straightforward and straight ahead. R6 is regenerate. It's probably the R I'm least enamored with. Um, but all the regeneration is, is your metabolic or your energy system development. Okay. And then R7 is recover. And that's one that we really try and focus on because when you think about when you're in the midst of a workout, you're going, 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 you know, and if we want to get into physiology, you're tapped into that sympathetic nervous system. Your right. fight or flight, and you want to be there. Sure. But when you're done, we've all heard the saying, it's not how fat or how hard you can train, it's how well you can recover. So Absolutely. what we're trying to do is take that athlete, shift them out of that sympathetic state, bang out eight, ten good breaths, maybe do a little bit of foam rolling at the end. So what we're trying to do is get them chilled back out faster so they can kickstart the recovery process and be ready to go for that next workout. No, no. So that's our seven. And again, you guys are probably doing some form or fashion of that, but it's just in a nice, pretty little package that our clients and our athletes can understand, and then we really start using it as well with our interns and our coaches, sure. because again, you have a framework, and you know it takes some of the creativity out of the program, right. but I feel like that makes you a more effective programmer, because it's more consistent over no, time. I, I agree 100%. I think this is you know this is something that I've talked about quite a bit on the show, is, is having a template that kind of holds you accountable to what you believe in, you know, and it's easy to do when you're, when you're seeing all kinds of different things out there and there's so much information now, it's paralysis by analysis that you, you, you know, all oh, that looks cool. So let me throw that in right. today. You know, well, it, it doesn't fit in the right. Yeah. And so when you have a system, I, I think it, what it does is it, it, it keeps you accountable to what your beliefs are 
uh, and, and, and whatever principles you believe. You know, when you, uh, I'm assuming it was you and Bill that kind of sat down and, and, and said, okay, let's, let's develop this a little bit. How did that meeting go? Was that something yeah. that just kind of came about natural or was it something that, you know, uh, you know, I think this is, this is business or, um, you know, what was the, you know, cause I think it's, you know, yeah. I think it, there's many staffs out there that, you know, um, that want to have that conversation that want to sit down and say, okay, let's, let's kind of formalize this a little bit. Yeah. Well, it started off, actually, it was myself and one of our former interns, Eric Otter, and then the current interns that we had. So we were just kind of looking at the program and how we had set it up. And so we were just sitting here actually in our assessment room and just started like piecing some of this together. Like, well, how can we make what we do more palatable to our clients, right? Because, you know, a lot of the stuff if you're talking to a lay person about sympathetic and parasympathetic and resetting joint positions, they're like, whatever, you know. Right. So what we tried to do was take what we did and just try and make it palatable, make it easy to understand. Right. So that's what we tried to do is water it down without watering it down. So yeah. just making it an easier message for our clients to digest. So we started off there and then, you know, Eric and I went with Bill and we're like, hey, you know, I think we're on to something here. So we had another meeting and that's when we started laying it all out, you know, all the R's and then it just gave us that framework to work from. Sure. I wouldn't say it just like you said. I don't know if we changed anything that we did, but it definitely changed the client's perspective sure. as to how we do things. It made things more uniform. And now anybody that comes through our system, whether they're an intern or a new coach, they've got like that standard. They've got those principles to work from right. when they write a new program. Right. You know, we, we've had a chance to talk quite a bit about, you know, just the, the strength coach dynamic, you know, and you kind of alluded to that a little bit earlier. What are some of the things that when you get an athlete from a college or a professional setting or you go and visit, because I know you get out and you speak quite a bit and, and listen to a lot of different coaches, I know, A, you know, how much you value those strength coaches, but also what are some of the things that you're seeing as trends that maybe uh, strength coaches need to be aware of? Sure. You know, I think one of the big things that we're spending more and more time and our energy on is, you know, I think we have a really strong understanding of biomechanics. I think you go to most schools and they got a pretty good handle on the resistance training side. One of the big issues that I see, and I don't know if it's a CrossFit influence or if it's just a cultural influence, but just this, this notion that you have to go hard in your conditioning every single workout. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we've seen quite a bit where, you know, these kids are just getting crushed. It's every day, you know, they're going hard, they're lifting hard, they're conditioning hard, and as a result, they almost present to us like they're out of shape, mm -hmm. you know, they've got mm -hmm. a high resting heart rate, they don't recover well, they don't sleep well, so this is something that we've actually been seeing more and more of and that we're trying to educate people on, it's like, look, if this person doesn't have a base, they don't have a foundation for their energy system development, you can go as hard as you want, but they're going to they're gonna peak too soon. They don't have that strong, wide base to build from. Right. And I think as strength coaches, we all know that. You know, you want to move well. You want to have, you know, a, a base of volume or an accumulation phase, whatever you want to call it. But for whatever reason, I feel like with energy system development, people want to just go right into, you know, balls out intensity day one. Right. And you just can't do that. And so many of the kids that we see now, they're already, I hate the term overtrained because I think it's overused, but they're under recovered. Sure. That's the bottom line. They don't have enough time to recover. And so that's something I'm always trying to convey to the coaches, whether they're strength coaches. Sometimes it's not even the strength coaches. Sometimes it's actually the field sport coaches that you got to get on board because right. they've done things a certain way for 15, 20, 25 years. Sometimes you have to bring them up to speed, and that's often easier said than done. Right. Well, there's no doubt with, with, with devices out there, heart rate monitors, catapult, things along those lines, it's easier to kind of get some information to kind of present that case. But you're right. Absolutely. It's a, it's a constant battle with, with sport coaches in that you've had success. And it's, and it's a constant battle with me. I mean, I, I know, you know, I've, in a lot of respects, maybe overtrained our athletes, but you know, sure. I've also had, you know, uh, 11 overtime wins, you know, yeah, and, and exactly. you're there, it's a battle. Like, I know this is maybe too much physiologically, but, it's, it's, yep. we've had some success, you know, and, and it's, it's an and internal that's where you're balancing the art and the science, no doubt. you know, no there's doubt. the science piece and then there's the art piece and that's where you have to lay on or rely on your intuition, what you think and feel to be true, looking at your athletes every day. Right. You know, I absolutely agree. Right. 
you know, this summer, you know, I've I had a chance the last couple of weeks here to get some good reading in, and, and you were so kind to send me an advanced copy of the Bulletproof Athlete. Yep. You know, what? T- tell me, what's what's the definition of a Bulletproof Athlete? And, you know, I've just gotten into the book, but, you know, yep. uh, what are some of the, the, the concepts that are in there? I, you know, I like to bring guys that are, that, that are, are either – great at, at, at a certain concept or they're the, the innovators of a concept. And so yeah. rather than just kind of get it, my interpretation, I wanted to get yours. Sure. Well, I think the biggest thing when it comes to being bulletproof is number one, having that movement foundation, having that physiological foundation to build from. But when you do that, when you have a strong foundation, you move well, you know, your energy system development is on point, you're more resilient. And that's the bottom line, right? Not Mm -hmm. only are you more resilient, so you're less likely to get injured, but you have that foundation to build from going forward. And I think, you know, over the years, because I've talked a lot about moving better, biomechanics, you know, corrective exercise, people assume that we don't actually lift weights, you know, it's just like foam rolling and glute bridges and that sort of thing. And while that stuff's great early on to help give you a foundation, over time, you've got to big strong foundation so that you can build from it right. and that's something that you know I really try and convey in this in that the ebook and you know all the videos that are associated with it is like look I want to give you the foundation that you probably never had and if we can go back to how I started I mean my basketball coach was our weights coach when I was in high school and you know he literally would pull a workout out of muscle and fitness magazine and that was our workout for the month right. you know so I think about kind of my training foundation it's like, it was horrible, sure. you know? Yeah, I mean, I was lucky because I played a lot of sports. I didn't have a lot of injuries along the way. But, you know, I didn't have a great strength training or energy system development foundation. Right. So that's what made me create this product. So, you know, if you're going to be in this for the long haul, you might as well take three or four months, give yourself that foundation so that whatever you want to do, whether it's play sports, compete in, you know, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, whatever the case may be, the better your foundation it is, the bigger taper, the bigger peak you're going to be able to have. Right. Uh, would you say this is this ebook and videos, is it more geared towards the athlete or is it more geared towards the coach that's coaching the athlete? It's most definitely geared more towards the end user, so like an athlete or mm-hmm. you know somebody that, that wants, you know, they want a program, but maybe they don't have somebody there to help them out. But I think coaches can benefit a ton from it. And this is, I was actually just talking about this this weekend because I I spoke at a conference and it was for, it was trainers and coaches that were there. And, you know, the thing is, there's over a hundred, I think, exercise videos. So you got a front view, a side view, and me giving the exact coaching cues that I use. So, a lot of coaches that were like, hey, you know, I'm going to show this to all my interns or I'm going to make all my staff members watch right. because I love the cues and the technique things that you focus on. So mm-hmm. while it's geared towards the end user, I think trainers and coaches could still benefit from it and use the program. Or, or it's, you know, the, the, the coach that's that, you know, a lot of times it's that high school coach that's got to be a high school teacher, a strength coach, a basketball coach, a, a assistant track coach. Absolutely. You know, um, having a solid program to be able to draw upon, you know, and, and not just something that's in, you know, a uh, muscle and fitness in the <laughs> fitness magazine. Yeah, it's definitely geared for athletic development, so it's going to help you out quite a bit. Well, I know, you know, I, I, I snuck in here because I know you're, you're extremely busy, but, you know, before you go, I want to get a couple things that sure. I always do. You know, one is, uh, what's, what's a quote that you have plastered in your weight room or one that you live by that just is, you know, this, this defines either the training system or me? Yep. Well, one quote that I've always kind of loved, and it I love it because it's short and it's sweet, but you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yeah. You know, and I think there's something to that. And so many people uh, are, are afraid to fail or afraid to take a big chance. And if you're not putting yourself out there, you're never going to know what your true potential is. And that's true whether you're in the weight room, whether it's academically, whether it's in your professional life, social life, whatever. That's right. So, you know. The people that are the most successful fail a lot. They just fail fast. <laughs> you know, they don't take a long time. They fail. They figure out what they did wrong, and they move on. So I love that quote. Miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. That's right. Well, you know, that's the that's the best learning process is to fail fast, right? Absolutely. You force yourself Absolutely. to learn. What about uh, you know, maybe something? I mean, I'll, I'll link up you know your book, obviously, and all the things that sure. you have going on, but. What are the, what's a, maybe something that you're reading right now or maybe a, a book that you recommend any strength coach read? 
Yep. So right now, uh, if you saw like the, the side of my bed, it's just a total disaster area. But uh, I'm rereading for like the fourth time Joel Jameson's Ultimate uh, wow. MMA Conditioning book. Yeah, that's good. It's, it's a foundational book as far as energy system development. And then I'm going back through uh, both of the Isher and Block periodization books just because – you know, those are books like I feel like you could read those four, five, six times and always pick up nuggets along the way. So I'm kind of cycling between those three right now. Sure. What about, uh, you know, in the state of technology, maybe an app that you use with your athletes or you use yourself from a, even a time management standpoint, you know, yep. what's something yep. that you have? Uh, the, the thing that I like the best, both for myself and my athletes, is, again, it's Joel's BioForce. Yeah. Um, so the HRV app, I've been using that with all my elite athletes. The thing that I like about this, and this is probably scary for guys such as ourselves, we grew up with that whole periodization model, right? And you're right. waving intensity and volume, and you don't need it. I mean, that's what's crazy, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. You can look at that, and it's more of a day-to-day -day process. How right. recovered is this person? How hard can they go? Do we need to crank it up? Do we need to back it off? And so it's much, It's become much more, instead of periodizing, periodizing a program, you've got a general layout, but then it's more of a tracking and monitoring. How hard can we go with this client on this particular day? Sure. Well, I, yeah, Joel's coming on the show, so i got a lot of questions for him. You know? Yeah, well, he's a great guy, and... I'm telling you, I should have like a, a business stake in in his uh, <laughs> his online business because I'm always t talking about how good his stuff is. No, so. He does a great job, and I've read both those books, and they're both they're both great. Very smart um, guy. What about it? You know, when you're surfing the web or something, you know, what's a website that maybe you go to or or uh, you know a resource that you go that you have out there? Yeah, you know, I, I try and and limit my time on the web because there's just so much information out there like you said so what I've tried to do over the years is kind of condense it and, and limit it to a handful of people I love Eric Cressy's stuff I feel like I always get something out of his blog posts uh, I love Gray Cook yeah. you know I think the guy only blogs once a month but you know it's gonna be high quality stuff uh, I'm a big fan of Patrick Ward's blog I think he's always got some unique insights in there um, you know, those are three of my favorite guys, and I always try and check their stuff out. Right. Um, but again, I, I really I try and limit my time on the web just because there's so much other stuff going on, and uh, I always tend to rely more on you know personal interaction or books, yeah. or seminars, and that sort of thing. Sure, you know, uh, you're you're always speaking, you're always getting kind of out there. What 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 do you got next? What's you know what's in the product? I know obviously Bulletproof Athletes releasing here pretty soon. Yep. But what else you got going on? Well, you know, quite honestly, the more I think about it is creating an extension of that product, right? So we got Bulletproof Athlete, but I know a lot of the guys out there these days, they like to cycle how they do things, right? Mm -hmm. So what I've thought about doing is, okay, Bulletproof Athlete is a four-month program. Well, what if we did like Bulletproof Strength, which is another four-month program? So eventually creating it out so you have three four-month programs sure. Sure. so that you can train for different things throughout the year. Because I know as you get older, you know, maybe you don't want to do a powerlifting meet, but you still want to focus on getting stronger. Right. Or, you know, beach season's coming up. You want Bulletproof Physique and, you know, you want to have the abs and the guns blazing for four months, you sure. know. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing is just kind of continuing to build that out. Because I think people will always need just solid, basic, solid foundational programming that they can follow. And I feel like I can serve that purpose pretty well. Oh, that's great, man. Well, hey, brother, I appreciate you coming on. I know this was a squeeze in between clients there, but <laughs> yep. um, you're the best, man. I appreciate you taking the time and, and, and giving us some good nuggets there. My pleasure, Ron. Thanks for having me. And uh, next time I'll set aside, we'll make sure we get a full hour, hour and a half in, all right? Awesome. Hey guys, a couple quick announcements before we let you go. Make sure you head over to ronmckeefrey.com if you're not already there to access all the links that we mentioned in the episode, including Bulletproof Athlete, which is Mike's latest product. Mike did a fantastic job with this. Uh, it's really three programs in one, uh, including recovery and nutrition tips and videos, along with an exercise library of about 160 videos or so with coaching points and so I know that you'll like that product uh, make sure you go ahead and click that and check that out while you're there enter your email so that you can receive updates on future episodes of Iron Game Chalk Talk and Tribe TV along with getting a free ebook uh, Weight Room Wisdom which is 365 quotes that I've used with my athletes through the years really appreciate Mike coming on today uh, next week we'll have another great speaker in the episode, so 
I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you then. Take care.